a particle moves with an acceleration of 2 of acceleration of a is equal to minus 2t. So acceleration is given to be uh, minus 2t, okay, where the unit of acceleration is meters per seconds squared. So the, this is the unit of acceleration and time is in seconds. So what does this mean? When time is zero, so let's understand this. this. When time is zero, the acceleration or the rate of change of velocity, oops, the rate of change of velocity is, okay, so when time is zero, the acceleration is zero. Our rate of change of velocity is zero. When t is one, the acceleration is minus two meters per second. It is minus two, because my, minus two times one is, the t is equal to one, two meters per second squared, and so on. Okay. Initially, the particle is two meters to the right. Right means it is po the dis displacement is positive of the reference point. Okay, so this is a reference point, or this is the starting point. Okay, so this information tells me. So this is one information that we know that acceleration is given by this function of minus two t. The second thing that we know is when t is zero, that's what it means to say initially. It is two meters right. Your displacement, which is s, is two meters. This is the second information. And the third information is when t is zero, it has a velocity of eight and one third meters per second. So your velocity is eight and one third meters per second. Okay, and that's the same thing like this, this and or this is the same thing, meters per second, like this. Now the question is when the when will the particle be two meters to the right from the reference point? So the question is, what's the time? At what time would it again be, when would this become two meters? So this is the whole question. So these are the two facts that are given. And from these two facts, or these three facts, we want to find this answer. So as I've done in a previous video, you know acceleration is ds dv by dt acceleration is dv by dt which implies your velocity you can get by integrating acceleration so velocity is a dt okay so this is equal to this implies your velocity is integration what is a a is minus 2t dt minus 2t dt okay so integrating that, so velocity becomes minus 2t squared over 2 plus c, which is the constant of acceleration. So we can say velocity is minus t squared plus c. So we need to figure out this constant c by some information that we have. So do we know velocity for any particular time? So we do know when time is 0, <coughs> The velocity is 8 and 1 third. Okay, so we can say, let me change color. Uh, velocity is 8 and 1 third when t is 0. So we can say, put that in this equation. So 8 and 1 third is equal to, this becomes 0 plus c. Okay, which implies your velocity is 8 and, sorry, your c, your constant c is equal to 8 and 1 third. So let me write velocity as a function of t, which is minus t squared plus 8 and 1 third. So this means at time 0, you have a velocity of 8 and 1 third. That's what is given, isn't it? Can you, can you understand? When t is 0, you have a velocity of 8 and 1 third. Now, velocity is a, a gradient function of displacement with respect to time. So that's ds by dt, which implies your distance or displacement is integration of v dt. Okay, is integration of v dt. So do we know v? Yes, we do know v. So therefore, we can say s 
is integration of your velocity, which is minus t squared. I'll write like this. 8 and 1 third, I'm going to write 8 minus t squared plus 8 and 1 third. So 8 and 1 third, how can you write that as a fraction? This is 25 thirds, isn't it? 25 third t to the power 0 dt. Okay, now integrating s with respect to time, you increase the power by 1. So it is minus t cube over 3 plus 25 over 3. Increase the power by 1, divide by the same power, plus c, the constant of integration. So s as a function of time is minus t cube over 3 plus 25 over 3t plus c. Okay, so we need to figure out c. So do we know some information about s and t? So yes, we do, do know when t is 0, s is 2. So let's put that here. So let me again change color so we can we know s is 2 when t is 0. So this becomes 0 plus 0 plus c, which implies c, c is 2. Okay, so s displacement. In physics, we call s, s is used for displacement. So displacement s is equal to minus t cube over 3 plus 25t over 3 plus 2. Okay, so now the question is, when is your s becoming 2? For which time is it becoming? It's coming back to 2 because at time 0, it is 2 meters away. So this is uh, graphically, this is a cubic equation. Okay, so it is going up and down. It has got a cubic curve. So let's understand this graphically. Okay, and then I will do uh, algebraically. Okay, so yeah, let's go to table, okay, and type in this equation and see. Go to table, just for understanding it a bit algebraically. So we know S, which is Y, is minus X cube divided by 3 plus 25 X divided by 3 plus 2. Let us go from, say, 0 seconds to 10 seconds, okay? And let us go at an interval of 0.5 seconds. So at time 0, it is uh, 2, and uh, at time after 0.5 seconds, it is 6.125, and so on, 13, 16, 17, 18, 16. Can you see it's going down now? 14, 9, and 2. At 5 seconds, it is coming back at 2. Okay, so let us graph this so that you can see. We have, we'll go, let us go to graph, and then <clears throat> in the scale, in the scale from <clears throat> 0 to 10 seconds, scale of 0 0.5, and then y I'll go from 0 to 20. Okay, or, yeah, 20 would do, scale of 2, and see how it looks like. So this is, at time 0, it is 2, and so g sol, uh, you want to find x. Uh, now we want to find uh, we want to find the time. Okay, so that is x when y is equal to two. So when time is zero, you, it's two meters away. And then if you scroll, after five seconds is again two meters away. And that's why I drew a cubic equation. Okay, so this is a cubic equation. If you want to see the whole graph, suppose let me go from minus ten to plus ten. And, of course, in, in this case, for the particle, the negative doesn't make sense here. So it's a cubic equation like this. Can you see? At time 0, it's 2 meters away. And at five, after 5 seconds, it's again 2 meters away. Okay, so let's do it algebraically now. Okay, so here we have to put t is equal to zero, 2 here. So 2 is equal to minus t cube over 3 plus 25t over 3, plus 2. 
So this two and this two gets cancelled. So I can say zero is equal to what can you factor? So let me write this. Can I factor out a one third t? If you factor out a one third t or negative one third t, uh, what do we get? You get here. Uh, you get a t squared here, isn't it? t squared minus 25. Okay. So here, let us factorize this. This is, I hope you understand, mi minus 130 times t squared is minus t cube over 3. And negative and negative makes this positive. This is plus 25t over 3. So this is minus 130. And let us factorize this. So this is t plus 5 and <coughs> t minus 5. You've got three answers here. <coughs> so we can say t is equal to 0, t is equal to negative 5, and t is equal to plus 5. All the three answers does make sense. So at time 0, when, when you started recording, it is 2 meters away from you. 5 seconds before you started recording, it is 2 meters away. And after 5 seconds, means five seconds after you start recording, it is two meters away. So let me graph this and let me show you again. So G sol, and we want to calculate X. So Y, so when it is before five seconds, so this is time zero, this is two meters. So before five seconds, it's two meters. And then if you scroll this, when time is zero, it is two meters uh, from the reference point to the right. And after five seconds is again two meters. This positive means it is two meters to the right. Y is your distance, and Y, if it's positive, it's to the right. So, yeah, the object is oscillating. From this graph, you can say this is going up and down. Okay, so negative distance means it's to the left, and positive distance means it is to the right from a reference point.